How are we doing ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another Pioneer Prep. And this prep is all going to be about this guy, a tinder tube. Using simple household items and a little bit of free stuff too, I'm going to show how you can make this tinder device in your very own kitchen. So let's get to it. Here is everything that you're going to need to construct your tinder tubes. First and foremost will be some sort of pot to melt your wax down in. Next, of course, will be your wax. Candle wax is perfectly fine, cheap, inexpensive, dollar store, don't care. Next is your paper towel. Again, inexpensive, doesn't have to be super crazy thick. And then something for you to form your tinder tubes on. Uh, I just found this half inch piece of copper tubing in my basement. I've been using it, it seems to give me uh, the right size, but it could be something thicker, something longer, anything that you want to use to construct the shell of your tinder tubes. Of course after that will be your tinder. So uh, your sawdust, twine, jute, lint, dryer lint, newspaper, punky wood, any of these are perfectly fine for your preferred tinder, what you like to use. For the remainder of this instructional I'm mainly going to be focusing on the dryer lint and the punky wood. The reason I decided to focus mainly on dryer lint and punky wood for my tinder tubes was because I wanted the most versatile tinder tube or tinder device in an emergency situation. We already know that dryer lint is very good at taking a spark, whether that be a ferro rod, flint and steel, or even a lighter that's out of fuel. Still, if you have that spark, you can get it to ignite and it ignites very quickly, provides a flame for a decent amount of time, albeit it does need to be dry. Now, punky wood, on the other hand, is very good at smoldering, also very good at producing a small little ember or coal, which can keep your fire alive. Now, if you have a spark or a flame, you have the lint. But what if you don't have a spark or a flame? What if you just have the sun, for example, and maybe you have a lens? A lot of people do carry some sort of lens in their bug out bag. Well, then here we are with the punky wood. Now while the wax is heating up, this is a perfect time for you to cut down your paper towels into your preferred size. Now I prefer to do a two and a half by two and a half inch square, but that just, I like that size, it seems to be the best. It fully wraps around the tube and makes for a good seal, and it's not too big, uh, not too bulky, but again, this is your tinder tube, you make them the size that you want. All right, the wax is fully melted, and also what I did is that I turned off the flame. And if you see steam or any type of smoke coming off of your wax, uh, it's too hot. Uh, because this is going to be a very hands-on process, and I don't want you guys getting burnt. So, also, having the wax be cooler also allows it to solidify faster when making the shape. So, what we're going to do here now, take... Our piece of paper towel, you're going to dip it into the wax. And paper towel is very absorbent, so you might be able to see just the wax is just pretty much climbing. I'm dipping a little bit more, it's climbing, climbing up into. A uh, little bit of access there, just let it drip off. Maybe whack it against the side of the pot if you want. And then bring in your pipe or pen or anything that you want. Put it right on there. There we go. Now, if the wax is cool, which mine is, I mean it's a little warm, so do be careful of this part, but as you can see, I am wrapping it around the pipe, or your pen, or whatever, and I'm pressing it down, this part's getting a little way, there we go. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to reach in here, and I'm going to blow on it. What that's going to do is that's going to help it harden a little bit, just toss any excess back into your pot, and comes right off. Now, what we'll do is that what I like to do is I like to put my pinky into here. It's still very, so very cool, not a problem. And then at this point, I'm gonna use my pinky and my finger. I'm gonna fold one side in, pinch, pinch. 
fold the other side in, pinch it, and then we're going to press those down and collapse this end in already. Now that that's done that, we can quickly pop it in here real quick, shake it off, give a little more wax on there. You can blow on it, help it set up a little bit faster. And now you have yourself the beginnings of a tinder tube. So what you want to do is to take these, you know, big pieces, take a knife, you know, I'm just going to use my knife that I take out when I bug out. And, you know, let's say, let's, let's, let's take a, this piece right here. That's, that's, that's got some holes in it. But for the purposes, we'll just take this piece right here. And what you want to do is you want to kind of break yourself off. It's pretty good. A piece that will fit in your tinder tube. So I would kind of go for maybe about like a half inch by half inch or so. Again, it depends on your tinder tube. But let's just let's just start right there. And oh, it's breaking apart. So that can happen. Maybe it'll just be a little bit. Maybe we'll do more of a saw action. Now this is this is the tricky part. Maybe a little right there. Let's see if we can get this to break a little bit more cleanly. There we go. Now, take this, this piece, and you want to kind of carve it down. Now, I've already carved a piece already, which is right here. And as you can see, it's pretty dense. Doesn't have, oh, come on, focus for me. Um, very dense, not a lot of holes in it. As you can see, it's a decent sized piece, um, about the size of, a, I would say, like a penny. Again, and I rounded it out so it fills up the tinder tube as nearly as possible. So while the tinder tube's cooling out, process your punky wood so you can then put this inside. Now we'll move over to the lint. Now here's a big old bag of lint that I've been collecting from my dryer for a while. And again, punky wood, free, lint, free. Again, very low cost. Now, one thing that you do if you, you know, look through here, you might see some green fibers in here. I happen to know that uh, we have a green rug that is synthetic. So you do want to try and get as many natural fibers, your cottons especially, because wool is a little bit, is, is a bit fire retardant. So your natural fibers are gonna be better, but again, free you can probably pick some of this out if you really want to be particular about it. i've had no problems with mixed but what i usually like to do take the lint out and i'm going to just kind of pull off a little piece about yay big and this is going to be about the size that we're going to stuff in the tinder tube i'm going to take the lint from before and i'm going to stuff it and use my pinky and stuff it into the tinder tube now, believe it or not, that big little piece is really tiny and small in there. So I'm going to take another small little piece in here. And I'm going to push it in there. You know, and, and be careful, you don't want to break your tinder tube, but you can push pretty decently hard and really compact this. Because you can always loft or fluff this up once you break it open. And the more you get in there, the better. So I'm going to put one little more piece in there. Oh, oh, no, I'm going to go here. There we go. That's better. There. Yeah. Open that up and so it's very nice inside here. Now you can actually pick a few different parts of your lint in case you're worried about synthetics like I said before. All right. It's nice and packed in there. Now we're going to take that piece of punky wood that we pre-carved. We're going to pop it right in. So now it's about halfway. That's kind of where I think you would want is about halfway. And then take the rest of lint and pack that in top. Just grab a little more. Need a little, few little smaller pieces now because it's going to get closer to the end. Maybe a little bit too big right there. Toss it back. And I would say, yeah, that's probably good. So if you can see where that lint has been packed to. So that's about maybe a quarter of an inch from the lip of the tinder tube. So you have quite a bit of lint, your piece of punky wood, and a little bit more lint. And the reason that I did it this way is that this end is really sealed. And it didn't matter if any wax got in there, 
because there wasn't anything in there when we sealed it. This end, on the other hand, when we attempt to seal it, a little bit of wax might get into that lint. And that's okay because this lint's gonna be perfectly fine. This lint, even if it absorbs a little bit of wax, will protect your punky wood, which you really don't want any wax getting on there. And then, even if some wax does get on here, that will help the lint burn a little bit slower. So now that we're all packed and ready to go, now it's time to seal this other end. Still warm, you might have to reheat it a little bit, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make sure I push that lint down real nice and good, and I'm just gonna kinda dip that edge in there and let the warm wax, and that looks like, no, let the warm wax sort of re-melt this a little bit so it's a little bit more flexible, there it goes. Oh, didn't show you, and there I'm folding in, and then folding in, getting a little excess wax there, that's okay. And then try, I mean if you want, try to create you know, something that's a little bit pretty. Now what we're gonna do, is we're gonna dip it in here again, shake off the excess, blow on it. So what you wanna do is you wanna create a seal. You wanna make sure there's no holes, let's see, no holes on this end, and no holes in this. And now this end looks a whole lot more sealed than this. So now it's up to you on how many times you want to dip this. So uh, for a comparison, here's one that we just built together. Here's another one that I dipped quite a lot. And actually, I think I kind of over dipped that because as you can see, it's it's quite thicker than, than the one that we did together. Now I added benefit about the tinder tubes. Um, here's the one here's the one that we did together and here's the one that I did earlier but this glass is filled with water and they float now that we've created our tinder tube together let me take you outside and show you how it performs using a solar ignition and also a ferro rod ignition um, I'm just going to use a scraper on the ferro rod to show you just how easy it is to get these open um, use a knife you can just use your bare fingernails if you want but Kind of, I just go down the line, try not to mess up the punky wood that's inside, and I just try and peel this back, keeping it together as much as I can. Let's open it up, see all that great lint that we have, piece of punky wood, nice and safe and dry. Got my lens, got the sun. Keep the lens perpendicular to the sun. And focus that beam. There, there we go. Oh, here we go. There we go. That wax in there. Two minutes now. Three minute mark. Might be out now, I almost about. Uh, it was a little over three minutes. But she's still smoldering. So, fair rod. Boom. Past the two minute mark. Four. Five. So I got a flame, small one, but it's fighting. Oh, and I think it's out there. So just past five minutes. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this Pioneer Prep. If you did, please do subscribe because there will be more Pioneer Preps on the way, as well as bots, reviews, and of course, Bug Out Boys Adventures. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below because you know I enjoy them. So, take care.